favorite hip-hop healer Karuma McGee and I'm back with another video now I've been saying this favorite hip-hop healer for years I know it's corny um, my son said it was corny but he was like you know what it kind of fits you so um, I'm gonna jump right into today's video your favorite healer is gonna jump right into today's video um, and at first before I jump into today's video I want to tell you why I'm doing today's video okay it's impromptu and the reason why it's impromptu is because book three of psychological realms of a traveling gypsy is scheduled to drop and that is the return of the divine feminine and when I tell you this book is like mm, it is the meat and potatoes of all that I wanted for this entire series of, of you know the divine feminine returning and return return to the divine feminine that whole thing is just ah it's amazing to to read the stories number one and be like oh my god I can't believe I wrote that and two to be able to say now that's practical knowledge that my girls can use or my women can use, whichever you refer to. But um, the book is dropping, and I need you guys to be able to understand why I wrote, a few of the things that I wrote and why. Now, if you're going to be picking up book three, let me tell you, you have to get book two, because you're gonna be completely confused, especially there's gonna be a huge fire that happens, and you're not gonna be able to, you know, there was one fire that happened in book two, but you're not gonna understand what happens at the palace and what happens uh, to, to Prisku you you're not going to be able to understand what happened and why all of this is happening and and what is it that Elder Eden is dropping to his spirit and and all you're not going to understand any of that as it relates to the storyline and what she means when she's doing it from a feminine energy perspective if you have not read the queendom on book two so if you don't have book two and you're you know you can't wait for book three please 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 read the queendom and book two so that when you go to read book three not only are you ready to digest the amount of knowledge that elder eden is about to drop okay when it comes to femininity but you will be able to slide right into that thing make sense get your notes because you've already been reading you've already been following along and you're already you already are acquainted with elder eden and her style and you're already acquainted with Asana and how she's going on this Asana hood journey. So make sure you get book two. So you Elder Eden showed her how to communicate with her hips, okay? And how to communicate with the divine masculine by feel, by feeling. Communicating by feeling is different than communicating by speaking. And I just showed you again two separate things. One, when you feel something, you feel all of the words that's coming out of your mouth. You're very aware of what you're saying. You're taking your time. You're allowing your breath to move through your body. And you can feel your words leaving your body and going out into the atmosphere. And therefore, penetrating the person or persons you're communicating to. Whereas when you're talking and you're speaking, that's actually just leaving your body with no awareness. Elder Eden taught Asana how to communicate by way of feeling, by way of feeling, by way of feeling, feeling, all right? By way of feeling, by way of body language. She taught her how to communicate on those levels because in order for Asana to reach Asana hood, which is a level not many women are able to reach, okay? When Elder Eden was teaching her a dragging Asana through, as and I say dragging purposely, dragging Asana through this whole feminine uh, initiation process, when she was dragging Asana through, she needed Asana to understand that a lot of people talk. Everybody just talk, 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 and they talk, and they talk, because I got information to talk, 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 talk. And what would make Asana different than all of the other women in the queendom was the fact that Asana was able to feel. She feels her words. and not, So not only is Asana able to feel uh, what she's speaking, she's able to feel what she's feeling. 
and she's not afraid to feel what she's feeling. And in book three, Elder Eden is going to teach you how to feel what you're feeling, whereas your feelings are not uh, overtaking you, but that you learn how to, to, um, to transfer that energy so that it can work for you to give you more feminine power. Um, and I say that because in this, this book, this last final book, the definitive guide to all things feminine. This is just going to be amazing. When As you know, Asana was learning how to feel and she mastered it, not only was she able to catch the eye of Chief Kulu, okay, or Chief Kulu's son, but she was also able to catch the eye of Chief Kulu. So the father and the son. And how does she do that? She did that because Asana felt more spoke less and she got that training from elder eden a lot of us are speaking speaking out of turn over speaking and that could kind of um it will it will get in the way of us trying to communicate especially to our mates our boyfriends our fiance says and so forth it will interfere with us trying to communicate because we are not essentially communicating we're speaking or talking and talking and speaking doesn't necessarily mean you're communicating okay now hear me when i say this just talking like i'm talking now doesn't necessarily mean that i'm communicating to you it doesn't necessarily mean that it's penetrating but when i take my time and i feel exactly what i'm saying i feel what i'm saying i think about what i'm saying i stand a better chance at penetrating my message to you, the viewer. That is what Elder Eden was teaching Asana. And far too often, we are all speaking, over speaking and out of turn. And if you watch my Lori Harvey video, I did tell you that she has learned the art of under speaking, okay? That is speak less, feel more. And I gave you a few scenarios where you can tell she's feeling in a few moments that she learned to move her body. That is what Elder Eden is teaching in this final you know, book. It goes deeper, there's so much knowledge here. But in today's video, I wanted to share and clear up a few things. When I said in the book that my mother had told me that women should be okay with being seen and not heard. I want to clear that up, okay? Because even my editor was like, what the hell does that mean? Okay, so let me go ahead and clear that up. And I'm gonna give you a story so you can kind of understand what I mean by that. Because so see, we're, we're visual creatures, right? We can hear people, but if we can kind of get a vision, we're better apt to understand it. One of my first dating experiences, which was a whirlwind fire feast of an amazing time in my life, one that I can tell my grandkids about that was just amazing, okay? One that, you know, my husband wouldn't mind me telling because I don't have many experiences, so to have that one was amazing, okay? Um, I recall being, I don't know if you want to call it swept off my feet as well as he was that we went to class together. I went to his classes. I stayed in his classes with him throughout the lectures. And I was not a student of the school. Hear me. I was at the library studying with him. And I actually taken some of his classes with him. But I was not a student of the school. He would pick me up McGee, I'm on my way to pick you up. McGee, I'm on my way to pick you up. McGee, I'm on your way to pick you up. And he would take me to the barbershop. He would take me to places where only guys should hang out. But I was always around. I was around so much that people always said, wherever you see him, you'll see Karima. And I never got to really appreciate that until I went through an initiation process that taught me about myself that made me teach able to express this 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 to you guys and teach it in the book that what made me so great to be around is that I was not afraid of silent moments. I in fact embraced them because at that moment I was able to feel what I was feeling in those moments, okay? So I was able to take those quiet moments and embrace them. And one, because it's a character flaw of mine, 
is that um, the character flaw that I have is I'm not that over speaking person. I'm not that person that needs to have filler words when there's a quiet moment. I'm also not that person that will call you on the phone and talk to you until you're blue in the face. There's only one person I've ever spent a lot of time on the phone with and that was my sister. Uh, you know, many years ago we would spend hours on the phone but that is the only one that I would talk to more than 25 to 30 minutes at a time. I'm not a heavy talker. That's just my, you can call it a character flaw. I speak when there's something important to say um, and that I got from my dad. Um, and I'm not that girl who gossips on the phone all the time, but I didn't know that that was beneficial. I learned that throughout my initiation as I went to priestess training, but I thought for a very long time that that was something that I need to work on. But what I didn't realize is that the masculine energy really appreciated that part of me. In fact, couldn't get enough of that. And so the constant um, I'm on my way to pick you up. I'm on my way to pick you up. Come and get you. And I was just like a tag along. Now, you would probably say, well, that could have been control. That could have been, you know, maybe he didn't want anyone else to have you around or he want you to be around anyone else or want you to do anything else. No, he genuinely, and I got permission to share this, okay? He genuinely wanted me around because I did not impose on his space even though I was there. And what I mean by impose on his space, okay, I could literally be lying on his chest and he can be on a phone call with someone from, I don't know, uh, let's just say he has friends in Britain, you know, uh, you know, all kind, all over the world. There'll be people on the phone and he'll be talking. And if I tried to get up, he'd be like, hold me closer. And um, I would be like, no, no, go ahead, take that call. No, 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 come on, come on, come on. Always inviting me in his space. And the reason why he would do that is because I did not infringe on his space. Part of my character flaw came in the fact that my mother taught me as a woman to be seen and not heard. And I recall growing up, when we would walk into other people's homes, she would tell us to not sit until we're told to sit. And so if we walked in someone's house and we were invited in, we would have to be invited to seat. You know, come on, have a seat. You guys can sit down. You don't have to stand. My brother and I, we would stand until someone would tell us to sit. And that was my mother's training early on. And so that kind of grooming later on in my teens, I thought it was a character flaw. But as I had grown into a woman, I realized that that actually is a superpower. I did not realize how valuable that was, that I was constantly, he in, not just he, he enjoyed, well, most people enjoy my space. They want me in their space because I don't infringe upon their space. If anything, I want to add to it. And so if there's a conversation going or we're talking, I'm absolutely not boring by any means. So let's get that out there. Being felt and being seen is more powerful than being heard. My mother knew that. Elder Eden knew that and teaching it in this book. And that's why I wrote it. So I need you guys to understand. So if you read it, don't freak out. And be like, why, cream, why is cream and telling women to shut up? No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is to understand that there's a lot of power in silence. In fact, for a woman on her Asana journey, there's more power in her not speaking. There's more power in her feeling. Communicating with her eyes. Okay? Communicating with her body in such a way that she's felt versus heard. My mother knew that. She knew that a long time ago. So when she was teaching me to, you know, be seen and not heard, I didn't know she was giving me the tools for to be a powerful woman. I didn't know that. I I just thought that she was strict when it came came to that 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 thing. And as I've grown older and I'm missed by many I didn't know that my superpower was the fact that people enjoyed being in my space. Because I never wanted to fill the, the space and time with extra words or too many words or gossiping or doing things that didn't matter. Whatever I was saying, it mattered. Whatever I was doing, it mattered. And if I'm spending time with you, that matters. So I want you guys to understand that that's where that came from. And hopefully you can learn something in this video. That it's okay to be quiet. It's okay to have a moment of suspense. It's okay to have moments of suspense. It's okay to have moments of, you know, 
you know, what if or well, not what if, because I don't think I've ever had a moment of what if, what if when there was a quiet moment. Um, I know a lot of women have trouble if a man's not speaking and if he's not saying something, they're thinking that it has something to do with them. Oh, what if he's not interested in me? Or what if he doesn't like me? Or what if, you know, what if he's lying to me? Or because there's a silent moment. So because it's so silent, we, we feel the need to say something or to do something or to overspeak and share too much and overshare. And that's something you're going to learn in book three too, what to share, how to share and how much, how much should be reserved for a woman. Um, and one more lesson that I'm going to share with you that my mom shared with me is that a woman should always have some sort of mystery to herself that no one else knows but herself and your mate your husband your boyfriend they don't need to know everything you know I shared that in one of my other videos is that part of this uh, this whole journey of being a woman is to learn to just be okay without one having the final say having the final ending making uh, matters worse by over speaking or talking or judging. What if you just learned how to just be and learned how to communicate? Because remember what Elder Eden said, speaking or talking does not mean you're communicating. Communicating means that there is a transfer in energy that's happening. So what I give out, you receive. Huh. And you felt it. And then you give it back to me. So there's that reciprocity happening in communication. I am giving, you are receiving, and you are giving back to me. I am pouring out, you are pouring in. I am pouring out, you are pouring in. That is what communicating is. Now, if the other person is not what we call, when we say, well, you're not hearing me. No, people hear you all the time. They don't feel what you're saying. So learn how to feel what you're saying before it comes out of your mouth, be aware of it and be conscious that what you're saying is important enough to speak out because what you speak out here, you can't get back, right? Um, so what you say, you can't get back. And perhaps, you know, growing up, I uh, maybe I was always afraid that I was going to say something that I had no business saying. And so I was very reserved with what I said. But like I said, as I've grown older uh, in this stage of life, I know that that was, that was a superpower. But, you know, my teens, I always thought that, you know, Maybe I need to talk more. Maybe, you know, maybe I need to do this more. But mama knew better. Mama knew better, better, better. And Elder Eden knows better. So I wanted to share that with you guys so that you guys understand that um, learn to just be okay with the quiet moments. And I can guarantee you, he'll love to have you around. He'll love to have you around. Men who stay away from you often is because they don't feel that you're adding anything to their space. Maybe you're the kind of person that's okay to be around for 15 minutes and 15 minutes tops. And that's because once you enjoy the first 15 minutes and it's fun, somehow insecurity begins to set in. And somehow extra thoughts start running through your head. And maybe you start to think about other things that are not really about the moment that you're having. And so you're no longer living in that moment. You're living in the future. You're living in the what ifs. And what women don't understand is that everything that you do is felt. Everything that you do is felt. Everything that you think is felt. Because we're energetic beings, okay? Spiritual beings on this human experience. And all of that is energy. And that is what we are teaching when we learn some of the great lessons about a sonahood in my book, Psychological Remedies of a Traveling Gypsy, Return of the Divine Feminine. I can't wait for you guys to read it. Until it drops, I want you guys to watch this, rewatch it. I hope I gave you a few jewels. And so you can come on in. Come on in, sister girl. Come on in to your asanahood, okay? Get book two, though. Make sure you get that. And make sure you remember that there is nothing wrong with the woman who speaks less but feels more. Until next time, be empowered, be inspired, and be what? Be well. Bye, guys.